Hello, so I'm doing a little bit of working on this here, today's sculpt of the 31 heads, the man thing. Well, technically it's yesterday's sculpt, um, but it is what it is. But I never really get to do videos of sculpting or painting, so I figured what the hell. I'll sit here in silence for a little while and sculpt, and that's really the main reason, because damn copyright. I can't just sit here and listen to the music I listen to while I sculpt or have a movie playing in the background and film it, because then, uh, you know, I can't show it, because Sony Music or Warner Brothers got to make a, you know, an extra five or ten cents off me playing music in the background while I do my art. Anyway, sorry, I don't mean to rant, but that's why we're sitting here in silence. Um, one of these days, maybe what I got to do is just film myself sculpting and then go back and change the audio, I guess, is probably the way to do it. But anyway, so you get to listen to my gravelly-ass old voice while I sculpt it. But this is the second time I'm doing a... A man thing. The original one was, you know, like quarter scale, smaller to go with my original swamp thing. But being last year, I made a, I made a larger swamp thing, and I'll need a larger man thing to go with them. So there you go. Plus, I just always thought he was a very cool character. So, so as usual, I'm sculpting with magic sculpt epoxy clay. I've tried everything, and I don't know, for some reason, I just like it the most. Like partially because once it comes time to mold it, i got a rock-hard sculpture to work with. It makes molding so much easier, especially on a two-part deal. Although most of my stuff are single molds because they're reliefs. Um, but and you can see over here, I don't know if you see it there. No, it's off-screen, but I got lotion. And that's what I use, because this epoxy clay can be very sticky. Like, and when you're mixing it up, if you're not using lotion or gloves, which you should definitely use gloves for mixing it. I take the gloves off once it's mixed. <clears throat> but they say it's toxic, so why risk it? But to cut the stickiness, you just use any kind of, like, a people said Vaseline, water. Water don't doesn't do it for me. I, I If it works for you, God bless you. Water does nothing to the clay for me. Because um, it's it's not a water-based clay, so it's not like a lubricant. It doesn't smooth it. Um, it. Vaseline works, but Vaseline is Vaseline. You then have a whole house and shop covered with Vaseline slime and tools covered with Vaseline slime that doesn't go away unless you really work at cleaning it, and I, I, I don't like it. So I use hand lotion. And it works perfectly. It lubricates the clay. It makes it smooth, so you can just drag a tool across it. It doesn't grab. It doesn't stick to your hands. It doesn't stick to anything, but it sticks to itself. And the hand lotion doesn't affect the cure. So, hand lotion is a must to, for me. Um... But to each his own, obviously. These sort of things are very subject to uh, what feels right for you. So, I got Magic Sculpt mixed up here. That's one of my other secrets, is never mix up too much. Just always, I've wasted so much of this stuff over the years, over mixing that now I don't mix up larger than a gumball size piece unless I'm, you know, building up basic armature bulk, really. Um, the whole base armature this guy was built up with Magic Sculpt Fast, but now all of these ribs and the detailing I'm doing with uh, Magic Sculpt Regular. So I've got, you know, two hours to work it before it starts curing up. Now, 
this has all been laid already. This is laid, this is laid. This newest batch of clay is just this side here. That hasn't really been detailed yet. I'm just going back to smooth it in. And then we'll start doing some uh, detailing of these ribs. And then once that's detailed, I'll mix up a little bit more for there. And a little bit more for a head, and then it'll be done for today, even though it's yesterday's piece. Um, he's going to get larger before he gets molded. He's going to get some of his big giant back muscle back there to fill in. And then he'll have a little bit of like chest and such under these pieces. So it won't just be a head, but that's all I'm worrying about for, for my challenge, you know. Okay, so that smoothed out. And I just like to go back and just start smoothing things, connecting things, just making things a little more organic. Blend them out a little bit. Squash them in so that they're not any hollows between them, so that they're actually more like a single unified piece. Um, throw one of my favorite sculpting tools right here, just your nice like wax spatula, I think they call them. Like a dental tool or a wax sculpting tool. The big one, I got my classic old school one from back in the day, which is my absolute favorite sculpting tool. And then bowls, these things. These are my other favorites. They sell these in 10 bucks. You get an assortment pack, and it's like eight or 10 of them. And they're all different size bowls in the end. And between the bowl and the spatula, that's really all I use. I mean, unless I've got a specialty texture tool or something that I'm really trying to do something specific with, um, that's really all I use. I find that the bowls and the flat spatulas for this type of clay work really good. I know for, you know, monster clay, other clays, you gotta use some rakes and stuff, but I don't really, I've never really found a need for using a rake with this, uh, with this kind of stuff. It just smooths so easy on its own, really. So the, this, this stage can be rough because once we go back and lotion it again, it's gonna smooth everything out. Now, if I was trying to do mechanical detail or, you know, like the wrinkles in a face of an actual likeness, then it would be a lot more precision work. But for this sort of thing, it's just fun. You just have fun and push the clay and see what kind of shapes you create and then go with that. You know, some of these blend them up a little bit. All right, so that's not too bad there. Oh, I can't wait to get this year's 31 done so I can actually get to uh, start molding them up because there's a lot of this year's that I really want to paint. Last year's 31, I think I only got about 10 or 11 of them molded up. Um, because it's kind of because I made them all so large. I tried to make them all third scale big giant guys, but then, uh, but then the economy went to hell and people can't spend the same amount of money they did in art when they can't afford gas and food. So I didn't didn't they didn't know them big pieces sold nearly as well as I thought or had hoped. So this year, now of course I'm saying this and this is a big big giant guy, but half of my pieces sculpts this year are back to like quarter scale stuff because hopefully if I can sell them for twenty bucks a head instead of thirty or forty for these big guys as castings, unpainted castings, then. Uh, 
Maybe business will pick up a little bit. I mean, I love the big stuff, but it's just not moving as well as the smaller stuff was. And I don't think that's because of the size as much as the people can't afford to live, but we won't get into that. I don't do politics here. Okay, so the basic rough up there and basic texture. And we'll go back and give it another level of smoothing. And this is just going to be a basic shape I'm trying to achieve on here. This isn't a finished sculpt because all of these are going to have little like vines and veins and berries and leaves on them and everything. This is really just trying to get a really nice consistent uh, base coat or base coat but base sculpt going on these and then once they're all hardened and I go back before I mold this all up he will get all of his final crazy detailing with vines and all that kind of stuff berries and fruits and all the shit that he should have hanging in his crazy organic whatever the hell they are vine vein tentacles on the man thing That this one, I think, as I make it bigger and add more of the back, I'm probably going to try and work maybe some little animal skulls into him. Like he's just kind of absorbing things in the swamp. here, blend this stuff all down a little more. I can't really see the phone so much so I hope that I'm centered in the screen yeah right, I'm kind of in the screen and maybe this may be upside down I don't know Can't wait to get painting on these new ones. I mean, that's the honest reason why I do this. It isn't to make money, although thank God people enjoy my work enough to buy some of it to keep me going here. But the real true reason that I sculpt stuff and mold and cast my own stuff is because I'm so addicted to paint and resin model kits that by producing them myself, I save 10 grand, 20 grand a year on all of the resin model kits I'd be buying from other people. Um, and then I buy them and most of them just end up going down and sit in my collection anyway. <laughs> I don't I don't normally get around to painting them. And I don't paint anybody else's stuff anymore now that I've got... Oof. I think right now I've got 75 pieces that, are, that I normally sell painted in my store that I'm sold out of as painted pieces. So I've got a insane backlog of painted stuff to get painted up and I mean I got probably 20 painted pieces sitting over there that are almost finished that basically I'm uh, I'm waiting on wood I gotta get wood done wood plaques you gotta see if people want to start buying painted guys that just have a hole drilled to hang on a wall without the wood plaque I might have to start doing that because the wood's been difficult lately I had an issue where I don't know if it was a chemical reaction or what, but I was using Rust-Oleum satin clear spray, like eight or ten coats, as the finish on those. And then I had one act weird and start bubbling 
like clear. And at first I thought it was the epoxy, but doing some investigating. I think it's the lacquer reactivating on the wooden plaque due to the wood, due to the resin gassing. I don't know, but because of this, I had to switch from the way I've been doing it for ever, 10 years, 12 years, I've been making wooden plaques for things and go back to uh, polyurethane. So a uh, little bit of a learning curve to try and get my wooden plaques as smooth and as nice as they were in lacquer in polyurethane, but I'm working on it. Oh, that might be upside down. So that's why there's a slight delay in new painted finished pieces being posted because I've got like eight wooden plaques downstairs that I just can't get to the level of finish that uh, I consider to be finished, you know. All right, so let's go back now and start giving these a little more texture. Just start out with tapping some of the roundness out of them. Connecting up some of the wrinkles. Oh, I don't know if the phone heard that noise that just came out of my mouth hole. Because it came down from my stomach, I think. Odd guy down in my stomach makes some strange noises sometimes. Especially on this crazy diet, eh? But doing good on that too. Now at 70 pounds lost. So that's awesome. I feel fantastic. My blood work numbers were terrible there. The doctor said that's why I had to start this whole diet thing. And, uh... Now the doctor's jealous of my numbers. In four months, I'm losing 70 pounds, all my blood work numbers have gotten so low and so good that I don't got worries. I don't got no pre-diabetes no more. So, thank God. Worth starving myself. Okay, so let that roll, a little more detail on that one. Let's do the same thing here. Um, it may look like I work fast and rough, and I do, but that's kind of because of the curing time frame of the clay. So I kind of developed a rough, fast style, and then I spend the rest of the time the clay is curing, going back and polishing it, and and fine details as much as I can. And again, this is this is a 31 head sculpt, so they're a little bit faster and a little bit looser. I mean, to be honest, I'm sculpting a head sculpt a day, and some of them are pretty decent size, so technically they're really more sketches than finished sculpts. Um, I've learned over the years it's better off to let them just the day go off and then put them aside unfinished and try and rush them in one day and then mold them right up and then have something that when I go back and look it has pieces on it that look unfinished to me and that really bothered me so I stopped doing that. But then the downside to that is like last year we're out of 31 sculpts only 10 of them have been finished and molded so I gotta, I gotta find a happy medium between the two. Right, just checking that guy out because he's the one I just did before the video was going. Just go back and spruce up some of these lines. And then, like I was saying with these ball tools here, well, as I'm going, I just keep reducing the size of the ball. You want the finer detail, 
then like the first round is, you know, this size guy. It's like a BB size, a pellet gun size. Then this tool has a dual ball feature. You see, it's got the bigger and the smaller. And then I go to the smaller one, which is, I don't know, what the head of a pin, maybe the back end, you know, the white ball end of a push pin, maybe. Um, and then I got, you know, I got a ton of them. Um, and then I got one that's much smaller than that, which is like for, I'll get to him in a second, like that there. Little fine wrinkles I use on that guy, but then you get the, the, the finer the tool gets, you've got to walk a balance between letting the clay cure some. Because if I go and dive into this with that little tiny fine end tool now while the clay is still soft, it'll just it'll just dig right in. Um, as this clay sits, it firms up more than just the cure, you know? Like, if you just leave the blob sitting there for 10 minutes, it's going to be a lot more solid than it was, but you can work that out. You can pick it up, start moving it, and it'll get soft again. But, you know, after an hour and a half, two hours, two and a half hours, then it really starts to... It's firming up, not just from sitting, but from the cure. Um, of the clay... And so I'm going to go back, and each time that the brush disappears from the screen, um, I'm getting more lotion on it, but I'm not just doing that. I'm also wiping it off on a piece of paper towel, because as I'm doing this, all these little tiny flakes of soft clay that are on this are getting on the brush. And if you don't clean it off, then you're just spreading these little tiny chunks around. But if kind of each time you wipe the brush off on a towel, most of those chunks are coming off on the paper towel which helps because there's nothing worse than making a rough sculpt and then doing this and that and getting it nice and smooth and having it just the way you think and then leaving it and then coming back and looking at it tomorrow and seeing just big chunks and flakes of clay that really don't belong there still there just because you didn't clean it up good enough then once it's hardened and cured and sometimes you can just flake them off, but sometimes you got to sit there and chip them off and you risk more than what you want coming off on the epoxy clay. So I find really cleaning it up a lot with the soft brush. And, it, and that really helps smooth out the, the hard, sharp details and make them more smooth and organic. The hand lotion is where it's at. And I don't just use one brand. Jen gets me whatever is cheapest at the time. I've never used one yet that I didn't like or didn't work well for doing this. So get yourself the cheap hand lotion for sculpt aid. in a little better here because it was a little abrupt there okay clean that up Man, I love sculpting. Yeah, I'm excited for the 31 to be done because it, it, obviously it is a little, it is a little stressful, especially when I start working on a sculpt that I'm really enjoying and then got to put it aside because I'm running into the next day. But I, I learned so much from doing the 31s that uh, I'm, I'm not complaining. But this year and going into the next year, I'm definitely going to concentrate on sculpting more than I have in the last year or two work on getting more of this stuff done and molded up so I can paint it. Because, man, I said it before and I say it again, I love painting resin model kits. Mm -hmm. I love it, I love it, I love it. You know what? I'm just realizing here now that if I swing this around this way, then this whole process probably won't be upside down. 